That's the one. We're on record. Right, here we go, rock and roll. Yeah. Right, so welcome everybody to this lottery funded, there it is, sounding off um, event. Uh, thank you to everybody that's coming along to the Coventry Music Museum for your support and everything. And welcome, wait for it, Tom Long! Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Excuse me, I'm over here. <laughs> yeah. Right, we always start off with the same question, big question, big broad question. How did you get into music? Um, I suppose it was sort of in the blood from day one, near enough. You know? Were your mum and dad into music at all? Fa yeah, yeah, fairly. In what kind of way? Well, they both played the piano. Um, I think the old man did do a little bit in dance bands, probably in the 20s, uh, 30s, I'm not sure. So was it the piano, the first sort of instrument that you started playing? Mm, I did have a little bit of a go at it, but I, I didn't get on very well with piano lessons and the way the way them people taught. Uh, so, uh, so I dropped out of that, but I, I wish I could have carried on, but I wish it wasn't such a a stupid te teacher. Oh, right. um, so it was the teacher that was a the problem then, right? I, I didn't get on with the way they yeah. they did it, but uh, I, we got a guitar given us when I was about nine. It was given to me older brothers. Right. But I got home from school earlier than that. Oh, right. <laughs> so you had to go on it first. You got to, you got to the guitar first. How many yeah. brothers did you have? Two. Was probably still got, sorry. Uh, so you got to the guitar first. Yeah, yeah. So what sort of things inspired you at first? What were the original things you were playing or trying to play in those days? It's difficult to remember, but the, the first. Oh come on! It's only about twelve years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 just the other day. Um, <laughs> I mean, what what what, 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 what was sort of inspired? Stuff, yeah. Then. Well, what kind of uh, yeah, the Donny Donny and stuff like that. Yeah, but. Going back to my, first, my first memories of guitar playing, uh, I actually heard a live broadcast on the radio by Django Reinhardt. Right. And later there was a, there was another program I used to listen to on the radio, and the theme tune was actually by Les Paul. And that was that always interested me. I hadn't a clue how he got that sort of sound. But yeah. Of course, I know now. And it wasn't like a brilliant piece of guitar playing but for the time it was very before its time if you like. Yeah that's, uh, the, obviously you're talking about two very creative guitar oh, players. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that obviously inspired yeah. you to want oh, yeah. to, to oh, yeah. improve your technique. And then all the, the skiffle stuff and what have you. Uh, Did you have a skiffle man? No. No? No. Uh, so, so we had a few knockabouts at school. Yeah. You know. So what was the first sort of semi-serious band that you were part of? Ooh. Um, I can't really... This is going to be a long one I can't remember <laughs> what it was called, but I'll tell you what, the, the lead singer was Jackie McCormack, who was in the Beat Preachers. Oh, right, OK. And I'm trying to think who else there was. I think most of them dropped out, dropped by the wayside. Um, Johnny Robinson was on drums, he became a school teacher. Um, Ken Dibble was on guitar, he became a, a super sound engineer. Um, I can't think who else was in it. Yeah. I remember Jack. So, what sort of places were you playing? Were you still at school when you were part of this? Uh, I think I'd just, I think I'd left. Um, we only did one, of, literally one or two gigs at Bishop Walston School. And such. It, you know, it didn't uh, go anywhere much. I played odd little sort of impromptu things for the, the rugby rag, mm -hmm. things like that. But and this was obviously on the guitar. Yeah, but the first sort of serious was when uh, Tony Newman walked in when I was at work and said, uh, do you want to join a band? Uh, we're talking yeah, about oh, by the way, we've got a gig in three weeks' time. <laughs> 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 so, and this was the Liberators, so or would be called uh, the Yeah, it was called, called the Solitaires at the time. Right. So tell us about this then, the, the build up to the gig and everything and how it felt. And well I was, uh, <laughs> it, it, it was panic really because um, 
I've got to learn a complete repertoire, which I've never learned a, a complete repertoire. How many songs? <coughs> well, you don't think too hard, yeah. No, it'd be, be about, probably about 20 or something. No, like that's that, a fair know. amount to learn. Well, in those days, bands did play fairly long periods. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that was probably two one-hour spots or something like that. And yeah. this was all like hits of the day, I presume? Yeah, yeah, Chuck Berry, Shadows and all that stuff, mm. you know. So how did it come out? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> you don't well, remember that? Passable, so. but uh, let's say um, the sort of the next gig was about a fortnight later and then there were sort of, within three months I've changed beyond recognition, I think. Mm. Because having to sort of work like hell at it, like practicing all lunchtime, evenings, every breathing moment if you like yeah and uh, yeah would you remember what your equipment was at the time yeah thinking about the uh, the guys yep. here might be interested in i had been messing around for a lot of time and i'd had a cheap bass i'd had a cheap guitar and i'd got a cheap motorbike and i'd saved in me money and i sold everything i'd got and i went to woodruff's in birmingham and i bought a 59 gibson Let's Paul Jr. in original pigskin case for 68 quid. Wow. Um, <laughs> try, try doing that now. <laughs> yeah. And I actually, I, I chopped it back in not long ago because the band and everyone around were strapped mad. So about nine months later, I went and chopped it in for a strap, about 61 strap. And I have a funny feeling where that guitar went to because there was a guy who lived not far up the road from Woodruff's and he appeared later in a band with a natural wow. Les Paul Jr. which looked very, very familiar. And that was Marco Peroni when he appeared in Adam Ant. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling it could have been the one. Because in those days, Gibson Les Pauls weren't directly imported into the country. You could only either get them via Germany or the American basis. So, the number of Les Pauls, up to mid-60s, the number of Les Pauls in this country, you could count on two hands. And what were you feeding that into? What amplifier were you? Um, at first I got a little Vox AC15, but then I, um, I, I got a proper Vox AC30, new one. For, forged me my father's signature on the AC30. <laughs> 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 like you do. <laughs> So, the Liberators. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about them. Is it the right? They had a single as well. Hurt so much. Yes, that's right. You, were you on the Very single? Very rare. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell us about that first single. Well, Tone, Tone would bring these um, numbers round on a on a tape recorder, and uh, me and him would sit and we'd do all the arrangement and everything. And I think I think we've got three numbers. Then there was a point where we hadn't, much, hadn't got much work and sort of word round the business. Somebody said to me, oh, ring up the, ha the Arthur House Agency in Reed Street. And I rang them up and I got through to this guy and he said, have you got any original material? I said, oh, yeah. He says, can you send it to us? Well, being a bit sort of about this, we said, no, we'll bring it down and play it to you, which we did. And he uh, signed us up on the spot. Mm. And interesting thing about that was um although it did didn't get anywhere we had to meet at the two eyes coffee bar and routine in the morning with glenn jones right. engineer yeah just listen to those play the three through and he said oh you're so well rehearsed that'll do that's fine that's enough and then we met back in the afternoon at ibc and that was my first encounter with jimmy page he tur turns up with a little amplifier in one hand and a guitar pedal in the other, borrowed a Telecaster off the engineer, played it, did the gig, and said, great guitar, mate, too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> he was a tight ass kid. Nice guy, but tight ass <laughs> <laughs> Right, so Jimmy paid. Yeah. Uh